there are a lot of people that separate themselves from God. And they tell people, don't look at me, but look who is inside of me. But if you wasn't important, then where would the Holy Spirit dwell? Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. And it is vitally important that you understand whose you are. We need to stop talking in a way that we say, well, we all are human and we make mistakes. But let me ask you this. Do you wake up in the morning and say to yourself, to the one in whom you have a relationship with, that I'm going to sin against them? Well, let me say it in this way. To many people, how many of you wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to cheat on my wife because I am human? Then why is it so? If you do not separate yourself from that one in whom you have given your vow to, then how much more should you keep the vow that you gave unto the Lord? Yeah. You say that I receive what Jesus Christ has done for me. And he is Lord over my life. Then why don't you illustrate it so? <laughs> Jesus said, everything that I do, I see the Father do. And everything that I say, I see the Father say. Amen. What about you? You are very important to God. Yes. And understand that when God answers your prayers, he sends a person. When the children of Israel were praying, they were in Egypt. Amen. But God went to the wilderness. Yeah. Amen. Okay. He did not go where the children were. He went and got a man. Yes. Amen. He went and got a person. Amen. And he said unto that person, you will go and deliver my people. So the way that we see ourselves, we have to understand who we are talking to. Amen. Okay. I'm just not talking to Sister Corita because when I talk to Sister Corita, I see God. Amen. Because she is an illustration yes. of whom I see. Outside of God, I know that I am not perfect. Amen. Outside of Him, I know that. Amen. That's why I never boast in myself. I always boast in Him. See, I, I know I'm, I'm not one to give a lot of shouts, but I did ask, can I be myself? We murder each other. There is no unity. Because we look at the outward appearance because we say we are human. But when are we are going to say that we are God? Because human looks at the outward appearance. But God looks at the heart. He sees himself. Just like when God told Jacob, I, I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He told me to say it correctly. He said, I feel crystal, but I hear Jesus. Because that's what Jacob's daddy said to him. He said, I feel. I, 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 I feel Esau, mm -hmm. but 
that he had changed. Mm -hmm. Do you understand how important you are in this day? Yes. yes. The time for killing each other is over. Yes. Yes. It is time for us to start loving one another truthfully. Yes. But this is the thing that needs to be illustrated. And the time for preaching Paul is over. Because Paul preached Christ. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Paul didn't make excuses. Paul walked in divine power. Here, God has given us everything that we need. Yes. Here upon this earth. Yes, yes. And it is time for us to start living in it. Yes. When you were praying, you said, God, send me a person. Yes. Or direct me to a place where that I can see you. Yes. And then when you get here, you say, Lord, what is going on? The devil is in this place. It is hard for us to be real with one another because of the way that we have been brought up. There are a lot of people who have been brought up in a religious way. That when they look at you, they say, why do I need to come to this place when they do the same thing I do? They fall all the time. So if God can't help them, then what's the use in me following him? It is time for us to change the way that we talk. It is time for us to start speaking with authority. In one of the men's Bible study, Brother Lawrence asked a question. And he said, is there anything that can stop you from obeying the word of the Lord? Everybody else said, no. But I raised my hand and said, yes. And, and, and he pulled his glasses down and looked at me like, oh, this is right here. And I like that. It's good because that means he's listening to me. But I told him, the one thing that always stops me from obeying God, it used to, but not anymore. Because now I know who I am. Amen. But it was people and situations. A people who say they are a God but that illustrates something else. See, in, the, in, in this word of God, God only spoke once. It was us who repeated it. You have a book that is full of books that will give you power in this life. You have to receive that. When I went and seen certain places that were flooded and animals that big farms were losing, the Lord showed me his people. When the rain was pouring and they was talking about all of the flooding, the Lord said, this is an illustration of my people that they look at a thing that looks usual, but yet don't see the effects of it. You say, this is life. Ah, uh, this is just rain. Mm -hmm. Or it is what it is. Or yeah. well, let's wait and see. Mm -hmm. And yet it destroys everything 
and everyone that you are connected to. Yeah. A hopeless generation that, I, that is left in a place that I did not put them. They are crying unto me like they are hopeless and helpless, but yet I have given them everything. Turn your Bibles to Ezekiel 36. to start at the 24th, 24th verse. And it says here that I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and I will bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. Yes. From all your filthiness, yes. and from all your idols, will I cleanse you. This is what God did through his spirit. Verse number 26. And he says, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you. Did you hear what the Lord has said? Yes. He said that I will put my spirit in you. And cause you to walk in my statue. Yes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Yes. And ye shall dwell in the land that I give to your fathers. Yes. And ye shall be my people. And I will be your God. Right. Here is a, a word that the Lord has spoken. And he said, I will make you. Not you on your own. Amen. Let me get myself right before I come in and, and, and do things for the Lord. You will never be able to. Yes. And you never will. Amen. There was a prayer that I prayed unto the Lord. And I told the Lord, I said, I want to get close to you. And the Lord told me, he said, are you sure of what you ask? <laughs> and I told the Lord, yes. And the Lord said, it is better for you to be cold than to get near me and to do something wrong that you know I do not allow for Amen. it to be. Yes. It's the same thing that happened with Moses. When Moses didn't illustrate God right in front of the people, God said, it is time for you to go. You didn't do what I said. I brought people here to see me. And you brought yourself in the way. When David wanted to build a temple, God said, no. And this was the man that was after. Ah, kids, kids. You see, there's a lot of things that happened to me that hurt me, that put me in a place to where I was getting to a point to where I, I wanted to stop talking about God. Because I started looking at my situation. How can I speak about something that I'm bitter in? 
Isn't that what Psalms chapter 1 says? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, nor all he that standing in the way of sinners. There are a lot of people that's trying to preach something when God said, don't sit in the counsel of these kind of people. Don't sit and listen to someone who is hurt and bitter towards me. Uh, it's, it's not towards Crystal or, or Coeda. They are bitter towards me. I brought them here into a place to instruct you, to show you what I have placed inside of them. Amen. But since you can't receive, I can't use you. Amen. In Mark chapter 9, you will see a story about a man who was with the Pharisees and they were arguing to the disciples because they was questioning them and saying are you really from God? If so, why you can't help my son? Okay. I see this, I see And Jesus was coming down from the mountain. Coming down from the mountain and Jesus Ask, what are you asking them? I'm giving you the 2019 version, okay? <laughs> what are you asking them? And then a man came from the crowd and said, I have brought my son here into, let's do an illustration, to transformation. And yet, these people who sit in this place couldn't even cast a demon out of my son. And Jesus looked at the boy. And the boy and the demon saw Jesus and did everything that the man said that the demon did. And Jesus asked the question, what is it that you want me to do? If you can, if you can, have mercy on us. And heal my son. And the verse that came after that, Jesus said, Oh, you faithless generation. You believe in the ideal of me yes. instead of believing in me. Yes. You are letting situations and problems and people who did not surrender to me affect how you live. You are not speaking with authority and power in which I have given them to you. And then Jesus spoke to the demons and told it to depart from the young man. Yes. These are the things that Jesus said in Mark chapter 16 that we would do. Yes. Them that believe. Yes. He didn't say that they were coming. He said, them that believe yes. will do these things. Yes. Yes. This place right here is a very powerful place. Yes. And everything that is illustrated from your heart will be received. Yes. Because they trust you. Trust you. But it is time for us to illustrate why he said, Be ye transformed yes. by the renewing of your mind. Amen. A lot of you have been hurt and you are stuck in a place that God said, It is time for you to cleanse your soul. The heart of you, yes. the place of where 
I had put life in you is affected. It's very infected because you are hurt. And it is a thing that the Lord told me, like my wife told me, this is the past, why are you still bringing it up? It's just time for us to live. It's just time for us to be in power. God said, if your child reflects you and acts like you, and you bless that child, how much more would I bless you? How much more would I bless you? You see, Jesus asked the man, how long has this been going on with this young man? Because the boy was older now and of age. And Jesus said it happened ever since he was a child. That's it. That's it. There are things that we see and then we say we can live with it. Okay. That's it. Make it plain. Come on. It is something to me on how a doctor can have more words than a pastor. Uh -oh. More power in his word than a pastor. Uh -oh. Ooh, Something is wrong here. Yes. Yes. You receive everything that a doctor said. Yes. But yet when a man of God comes and say that you are healed, yes. you say, ah, wait and see. <laughs> Is he really telling the truth to me? Because the symptoms that I feel is not about symptoms. It is about the truth. Our priorities are mixed up in this place. And people are afraid to be real in this place. And this is the very place where we should all be real. You are bringing a worldly way and a worldly system into a place that it does not belong. Because it is a shame how the supervisor can talk crazy to you. And then when the man of God tells you the truth, you say, oh, it's time to fight. <laughs> should not be this way. Yeah. Not for us. Yeah. If God shows you someone that you hurt, it is time for you to go and apologize. Yeah. One young man asked me, and he told me, I was, on, I was on the job, and he said, you are different from everybody else. What is it about you? How is it that you can come in this place and smile all the time? And I told him, I said, it, it, is, it is who lives in me. And what he had shown me. The most powerful disciple for me was Judas. Because Judas was stuck in the past. Judas was in a place where he reflected on the things that he did wrong in the presence of God. Yeah. Separated himself yeah. Yeah. and then brought suicide. Yeah. When you get shown what you have did wrong, don't get stuck in those places. Yeah. Stop dwelling on things in the past. Because when you do, you separate yourself mm -hmm. instead of running to. Mm -hmm. Speak with authority to your children, Amen. to your body, because yes. God said, I have given you dominion yes. here upon this earth. Yes. Be careful who you diss, because they belong to me. That's why I can't diss nobody. I don't care what position or place, as I should say, that you can understand what position or place that you are in. 
I can diss you. Because you belong to God. It is like a woman that I was helping. And she brought up her past relationships. And she said how she was fooled. And that God didn't show her how that man really was. And I told the woman, you're lying. That truth ain't in you. And she looked at me and she said, what do you mean? I said, because when God showed you, the only time that that man reads, it was with you and not on his own. When he showed you what that man rather do on his spare time, he was showing you. This man's heart is not with me. Even though he claims he is mine. He will add to you and not take away if he was mine. If you feel any less, then it is time to check on who you are following. It is time. We are a body that should be operating from power. God has given us his spirit. Yes, he has. Yes. And in his spirit, we have power yes. and authority. Yes. Why are you letting the point that was made take more control over you? Amen. My body hurts. Speak to it. Mm -hmm. Come on, I have given you power. Mm -hmm. yes. My money ain't right. Speak to it. He said, if you be ashamed of me in front of people, then I will be ashamed of you in front of my father. People may look at you strange, but they look at Jesus strange. It is something on how the Lord showed me. When God truly shows himself, fear comes. Because when Jesus was walking on the water, they said, ghost. And Jesus said, come on, it's me. <laughs> it is something on how fearful we really get when God really shows himself. We get scared, then. And at the beginning of Mark chapter 9, on the Mount of Mount Transfiguration, God said they had a fear then yes. when yes. Jesus showed himself. Yes. And Peter started talking crazy. Let, 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 let us speak. Let us put it in an altar for you, Elijah, and Moses. It is time for us to advance yes. instead of going back to the elementary of things. It is time for us to walk in true power. Yes. But my question is, is why you continue to stay on the boat? Yes. Because the Lord, I, I, I shared this one time, but I will share it again. The Lord showed me how when Patrick got scared, Peter said, if it's you, bid me to come. And he said, come. While the others stayed on the boat. I'm going to stay with what I know will keep us afloat. You can go out there if you want to. But I'm going to stay on the thing that will keep us afloat. Do you understand what I'm trying to show you here? Some may say that I am all over the place, but understand this. I am telling you from what he is telling me. When you have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, there is nothing that beats the same. You will walk in a power that people will be scared to survive. 
<laughs> don't talk about him. <laughs> I used to say, don't talk about her. Look, do you understand? Yes. It is time for us to illustrate these things. Yes. But back to Peter. Peter, 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 Peter woke and, and, and he stepped in a place. Yeah. But the part that was amazing is that before he even stepped off, he saw the waves and the wind. Yes. But he still stepped out in his yes. Yes. And he was walking in a way. That man said, you can't do it. That's it. That's it. But God said, come. Yes, come. God proves himself. Yes. When you come on his word. Yes. But there was something else that he was showing me that amazed me. It's because right in the presence of the Lord, he started sinking. Yep. He started sinking in a place where he says, are you really with me? A lot of times, we ask the question, are you really with me? When the pressure hits. Jesus didn't hesitate. He grabbed him. And from what he told me, Peter woke twice. First to him. And then the other back to the boat. How do you say that? Say that. You 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 say that. But he didn't say. You didn't have faith. He said, why did you doubt? Was it because the symptoms look strong to you? And since your body is not feeling right, that my word wouldn't work? It is something on how the laws of gravity started to work when he started to doubt. Yes. But yet, it didn't work when he walked on his word. Yes. Okay. It is time for us to see the things of God. Yes. To see the manifestation of his power. Yes. yes. That as soon as you walk through this door, you will feel him. Mm. Yeah. And you will not leave the same way that you yeah. came in. That you will look at your children yes. and say, God made a promise unto me yes. that me and my household shall be saved. Yes. That I'm tired of scratching on the surface. Oh I'm going to get to the root of this thing yes. and say, This spirit that is stopping my child from speaking and living will come off in the name of Jesus. didn't raise us to say, Lord, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Come on, God. When Brandy and Javon is in the house, Amen. they have access to everything. And to some things they ask. They don't beg. They ask. And we say, receive. Without a doubt, they go in and get what they heart desire. Yes, it is time for us to see God in that manner. Yes. 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 When I ask you something, it is done. I, I don't have to worry about it. It is done. In the name of Jesus. But it is time for us to get cleansed. 3rd John chapter, 3rd John chapter 2 says that I, 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 I pray that you prosper yeah. and be in good health, yeah. but also that your yeah. soul prospers yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Why would he say something like that? 
us. We want clarity in our lives. We don't want to waver. Amen. And this is for somebody else here too. God said, my word and my spirit are unreasonable. Amen. Let's be reasonable, bro, brother, that is because I can't do, no, not today. Maybe next time I will do. God is unreasonable. He pushes us. That's how you know you are walking in the right way. Fear hesitates, but faith leaps. Fear considers a thing. Well, if I do, what if I don't have for this? But faith leaps. We are reflecting the true and living God. He lives on the inside of us. He says that we are supposed to walk in the light as He is in the light. Yes. Yes. For some of you who want to know, that's 1 John 1 and 7. <laughs> it is time, people. It is time. We have allowed things to be in a way that is not godly for too long. Amen. This is why you are in your present place right now. Jesus said that the devil comes and he will find nothing in me. That's right. And all of a sudden I asked the question, I said, what does that mean? He says, son, everything that is in me is life. It is life. But in the garden, a feeling of depression hit his very soul. And he asked for people to pray, and they fell asleep. Is that the way we are going to be when God brings the people in? When God comes back, he said, are they still asleep? Can you not pray with me for one hour? It is time. It is time. I was talking to two young men. Because I'm almost finished. Not closing, but I'm almost finished. But I was talking to two young men. <laughs> and as I was talking to them, I said, you know, have you ever really looked at why you do the things that you do? And they looked at me. And they said, hmm, that's a good question. But then I asked a question. I said, have you ever been told that I want you to do better than me? <coughs> that I don't want you to be like me, but I want you to be better than me. Yes. I said, do you see the deal of separation that you have been taught? Where you come from is not powerful. It is not enough. But I want you to do better than me. Yes. And then when you get to a place that where you come from never been, and you find yourself stuck, you realize that I can't even go back to where I come from because they have never been in this place. <laughs> So you substitute and then you go to something else that sounds like where you came from but really is not where you came from. And then I asked him, I said, what age did you begin being told to get a job? 
Now I understand, I understand, don't kill me because I understand why y'all say get a job. But then I asked him this question. When you got told to get a job, when did it happen? They said it was at a young age. Yeah. So you got told to go to a place where creativity is not a factor. That when you feel and see yourself better than the next man, you are not allowed to move. Wow. That they pick them instead of you. Yeah. Yeah. Enslaving the gift yeah. and what God has given us. Yeah. Right. And I asked them, what did you go to college for? And they told me. And I said, wouldn't it have been better if you would have found out your gift yeah. and then go to college and then watch it work? That's yeah. it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Then I asked them, I said, do you even know who you are? Instead of getting a job, won't you pray for being a creator of jobs? Yeah. that your thought has, pattern has to change. Yes. You are the son of a billionaire. Act like one. Amen. Act like one. But instead, you feel that you are trapped. Know who you are in God. And he said, your gifts will make room for you. And the last one, then I will close. I will finish. Not close, but finish, finish. A man asked me, and he said, I, he asked me a question about how, why, why is it that you're not worried about sleeping up? I said, I'm, I'm not worried because God covers me. I pray every morning. Don't let me do what I want to do. You slap me in the face and tell me what you want me to do. But then I told her, I said, for me to make a mistake, it is because I know too much. But there is one thing that I fear. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 7, yes, you will read a passage where the one in whom died for us had a fear. He prayed. And the very thing that I asked was, what was that fear? He knew that his body would be resurrected. But there was a fear. Right here, verse number seven. It says, and who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard that he feared. Then the Lord told me to Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 6. Revelation chapter 20, verse number 6. Ah, if we can. Ah, it says, Blessed and holy is he that he hath caught in the first resurrection on such a second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Can I show you how he showed me? And then I will be finished. In the place of where I told that guy that I, that I, that I know too much, that even with my wife, even when things wave, I don't move. But there will be no other that will 
going to be able to take her place. It's because I know too much. See, when my son does sinful things, I tell him, this is wrong. And daddy will punish if you do not listen. Don't ever do this again. So that's the same way that God that did me. But, but in, 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 in Hebrews 5, it was a thing that, that God showed me that Jesus feared. He said, he told all of his disciples that my body will be raised up on the third day. But then there was something that happened that changed the way he talked. He said, all throughout scriptures, I said, Father. But it wasn't until I got on the cross is when I said, God. Okay, he said, it wasn't until sin entered my life is when I stopped saying Father and started saying God because my spirit was getting ready to be disconnected from the one and who created me. Jesus knew that if the Spirit of God is not here and we are not connected to Him, we will die a horrible death. What is around you every day? I don't want to lose my connection. I want to continue to live and continue to call him Father. Because when Jesus was on the cross, he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Wait a minute, why did you call him God when throughout scripture you say, Wow? Oh. Because sin. See, that was the death that Adam was told about in the garden. <laughs> you will surely die when you receive and accept sin. Amen. So people, don't let anything separate you from God. From the encounters that you had and from the people that he placed in your life. Don't reject it. Just because a person don't act the way I want them to act or speak the way I want them to speak doesn't mean that God didn't sin. Work on it, work on it. Yes, man. The most powerful thing as I, I was getting ready to, to speak, he showed me Homer. How Homer came from a mighty long way. And now it is speaking in a way yes. that is pleasing unto God. Yes. I am finished.
You said, Lord, if we believe in our heart, confess with our mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Lord, you did not tell us to confess all of our sins. You said, confess the Lord Jesus, and he will deal with every one of our sins as we ask him to be Lord and Savior. We thank you, we bless you, we honor you. Now, if there's anyone here today that has never prayed that, never asked the Lord Jesus to become Lord of your life, all you have to do is open your hearts. I believe with my heart, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. If there's anyone here today that you have prayed that prayer and you have invited the Lord Jesus in, but you let circumstances keep you from walking in the way. And you've let life itself keep you from walking in the way. We ask right now that you can be rededicated to the Lord in your service, be restored to the Lord because He never left you. You may have walked away, but He's never left you. So if you're looking to become born again, walking in the way of the Lord, if you're looking to be rededicated, and lastly, if you're looking for a church home, it may not be fancy, but we teach the truth of God's word so that you can be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Father, we thank you today that you have spoken to us by your word. And Father, right now, there's anyone here today that needs to receive the Lord Jesus as Savior. And Lord, when I count to three, Lord, let them lift their hand. So Pastor, pray for me. I'm ready to receive. If there's anyone here today, say, Lord, I'm, I'm ready to rededicate my heart, my service back to you. I know you love me, you never left me. I just let life and circumstances get in my way. But I'm ready to rededicate my service to you. When I count to three, I want you to lift your hands. We have some wonderful counselors ready and willing to talk to you about your decision. Last, if you're looking for a church home, a place where you will have shepherds that will pray for you, that will stand in agreement with you for your healing, for your, your prosperity, for your family's salvation, as one that must give an account to God. If you're looking for a church home, if you want to unite with Transformation Church, you want to find out what do I need to do to become a part of this church, I want you to slip your hand when I count to three. And we'll give you some information, we'll pray with you, so that you can make an intelligent, informed decision about where you're going to call your home church. So now, I count to three, if you need to be saved for the first time, rededicate your heart to the Lord, or if you need to become a part of Transformation Church. One. When I count to three, so let me hand up two. Lord, we bless you. Confirm your word. Three. 